Welcome, everyone, to the ACC Community Cookbook Tour. Um, my name is Koichi Mizushima. I'm Sharon Ito. And I'm Mary Ellen Burns. And we're very excited because <laughs> look here, we have a live studio audience here at the ACC studios. So uh, Koichi, he used to run the Kamon restaurant. You might be familiar with that. Uh, One of my favorites. <laughs> That was a long time ago, long time ago. So thankfully I did get out of the business and uh, we're leaving it up to the real experts here today. And we're gonna feature a lot of their uh, recipes in the cookbook. And all of you know Sharon Ito, of course. We all remember her as the news anchor from Channel 10. So Sharon, pleasure to be here with you today. It's nice to be here. And Mary Ellen, you put your heart and soul into this along with Chef David Suhu. Yes, I uh, did. It took us about a year. It was originally David's idea to do the cookbook, and then it evolved as we realized it really needed to be an entire uh, community cookbook with all the ACC members and families and uh, people who watch lifelong learning programs contributing. And it's called The Foods We Share, The Stories We Tell. So it's not just a cookbook. It's, you know, recipes passed down from generations, stories, memories, traditions, you know, secret cooking, Se <laughs> cooking tips, too. I, personally, I think it's the stories that really add so much context to these recipes. And a lot of them are from family members where the recipes are really quite old and they've been around for generations. And others are adaptations of family recipes. And again, we uh, collected from all over. So there's Thai, Vietnamese, Hmong, Laotian, Cambodian, Indian, uh, Japanese, Chinese, Filipino, something that really represents the entire community. It's really pan-Asian and, and truly the Sacramento Valley. Absolutely. In fact, quite a few of our recipes are from the Sacramento uh, Delta. Uh, we were able to go to libraries and community centers throughout Sacramento County. So I want to do a shout out actually for the Sacramento Public Library who gave us space for us to be able to interview uh, uh, people there. And a lot of people uh, told us that they didn't have a, a recipe that they could actually write down. So a crew of volunteers and I actually sat down and asked them to share their story. We got the story down and brought measuring spoons and cups and said, when you say a pinch of this, what do you mean really? A little bit of this and a little bit, a of, bit that. of that. Well, so many recipes are like that, right? Uh, they're oh, hard absolutely. to actually get them formally written down with formal measurements. So, um, But at least in the cookbook, they do have formal measurements. So absolutely. you will be able to make these recipes at home. So we do have these cookbooks for sale here at the ACC. Is that right? Yes. We do, and we'll tell you more about how to get them, uh, where to go online, but we want to tell you what's coming up in the next hour. So our featured home cooks include Alfred Yi, Mary Ann G, Lana Chong, Stacy Law, Elizabeth Wong, and Auntie Molly Chow, and Mary Ellen, who's curated these recipes and will be showcasing some of the dishes that have right. been brought in, and you can start smelling all yes. of the, oh, yes. the dishes. And if I might say, there are a lot of people who are just very shy and didn't want to appear on camera. And so we have their dishes as well. So uh, uh, Sharon Sakata, uh, Kyle Ng, Sally Fang, um, and um, um, other people have contributed as well. And you're going to have, if you're in the audience, an opportunity to taste everything at the end. So I'm going to get ready to meet our guest chefs, and I'll let you two continue the conversation. Okay, thank you. So Mary Ellen, um, about did you did you already mention this? But about how many total recipes are in the cookbook? So there are at least I think 180. Oh, I'm wow. going to be honest; I forgot wow. to count them. So uh, 180, and we really did try to represent the entire community. So we would go to people and just say, "Could you contribute something?" 
There are some recipes that came in too late. We have created a QR code in the book and we're going to have updates wow. so that people can continue to submit. So if you're in the audience at home or here, please feel free to still uh, submit, buy a book to get that QR code. So when you buy a book, you're not just getting the book, you're getting all of the additional features that are gonna come with that in the future Absolutely. as well. Well, that's wonderful, that's wonderful. And it's great that you have so many different uh, cuisines and traditions represented here. And I'm gonna be sure that I ask the actual chefs on how to pronounce their dishes. Oh. So that's what I'm gonna do today, because <laughs> I don't wanna mispronounce any of the dishes. So um, any, any other um, historical points or how this uh, idea came about? Would you like to share with the people at home? Well, as I said before, David Sue, who was the one who initially thought of this idea, a little bit different concept. He was thinking of doing more of essentials of Asian cooking and it's evolved. I will say that one of my favorite recipes in the book was by um, Veronica Peterson. It's actually a gold rush recipe. And there are recipes from Yi Chow up from, uh, um, of course, I'm gonna forget the name, Fiddletown as well. So there are historic recipes and we expanded that ACC community. So because there's so many of these programs are done on YouTube and Facebook, we have contributors as far away as New Hampshire and Vermont. That, that is wonderful, Mary Ellen. And I understand that you are also not just the uh, uh, co-creator and editor, but you are also a contributor as well. So we are going to talk to you later on in the program as well. So I think, why don't we move over to Sharon and she can introduce our first contributor today. Thank you, Mary Ellen. Thank you. Okay, let's get the show started. I want to introduce our first guest chef. Superman. <laughs> Do you wear this around the house? No. <laughs> this is only when I'm flying. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is Alfred Yee. He is the resident chef here at ACC. He cooks for the volunteers. He cooks for the staff. He's here almost every day. Uh, great to have you. Thank you. So. He's been all over. He's owned grocery stores. He's worked at Sac State. He's worked at community colleges. Um, and then you discovered ACC, and you've done so many things here. Why don't you tell us? Well, a I few. started uh, 2009, so almost 14 years ago, as a driver for the ACC rides. Then, over f after five years, I started doing field trips and seminars and evolved into cooking. So before COVID, about five years of cooking classes here. Okay, so what's interesting is you cook, and yet you don't call yourself a cook no. or a chef. No. And why is that? Just a hobby. <laughs> <laughs> but you're very skilled. Where did you pick up all of these culinary skills? Well, like I mentioned, a lot of people in my, in my classes, and they say, oh, where did you learn to cook? I said, well, you know, it's kind of come naturally. Uh, I, I, I watch television shows. I read cookbooks watch YouTube, watch mom, my mom cook, and I explain to people, you know, some people, they can hit a baseball naturally, play musical instruments naturally, and some people do math really well, and I just cook, <laughs> it's, it's kind of naturally. Well, you're Superman, so I'm sure you have plenty of skills, huh? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna let you head over to the main table where you can show Koichi the dish that you're making. This would be Chinese eggplant. Yes. Alfred, welcome. Thank you so much again. Uh, so as I promised earlier in the program, I'm going to ask you to uh, introduce your dish and, and uh, what it is and the name of it, if you would. It's just Chinese uh, eggplant with garlic sauce. It's very simple. It's very simple to make. Uh, I made this quite often at ACC here in my cooking classes and for the staff and volunteers, and they just love it. I said, well, it's an easy dish to make. Uh, it's simple, you don't have to have the, uh, fancy ingredients, doesn't take very long, and it's very tasty. It, it looks fantastic, it smells fantastic too. Again, the advantages of coming and being live in the studio audience, right? You can't get this through uh, Zoom and YouTube. So, um, you know, this would be perfect for my wife as well. She's pescatarian, so I'm sure she'd be really, really excited about this dish here. Um, did you want to talk a little bit about how you how you got inspired to create this dish? Or Well, you know, lots of times I go out and eat, like most of you do, and then I'll eat all types of food. And I go to restaurants, I'll eat something, I said, I wonder if I can make it. If I can make it as good or good or better, I'll do it. And I just take it apart. If I can't, I just go out back and have another dish and order it. But basically, if I try something, I can pretty much 
do it. You can reverse engineer your reverse dish. Reverse engineer much. Your dish. Oh, that's yeah. great. And sometimes, uh, and I don't know if this is true for Chinese cooking as well, but there are a lot of basic core ingredients that you draw right. from, uh, yes. so you know where to draw your inspiration from the starting point, huh? So, yeah, and a lot of great. techniques. You pick up a lot of techniques, and I watch a lot of television shows, like America's Test Kitchen and stuff like that. Why they do that? You know, I love that. And then a few other cooking shows on the internet. Why they do it? How, what comes of it? You know, not just throw things together, but why you're doing this. And so, so Sharon mentioned too, you do a lot of the cooking here at ACC as well, right? So you right. take care of all the folks here. So that is really, really wonderful. You must really enjoy it. Do you love it as much? <laughs> <laughs> there was too much of a pause. We're going to edit that pause out in post, so that's going to be a seamless, yes, I love it. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I like it. Give me something. Otherwise, well, I can't go fishing all the time. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but it is. It, cooking, in, for, cooking for a lot of people is a lot of work, huh? It's, it's a lot of work. A lot of people, the, the volume, that takes a lot of time. A lot of, it forces me, because I'm retired you know, from, from my professions, it forces you to organize, forces you to plan and execute. You know, purchase ingredients and get the crew together. I have a good kitchen crew, two of them, two of them are here right now, and they help me prep and clean and do and serve and all the stuff. So yeah, it, it, it keeps my mind active, which is very important during retirement. That's wonderful. Your mind and your your body, right? Because right. cooking involves the entire body. So right. I, that's wonderful. Yeah. Um, should I should I tr can I try a bite? Oh. Of this? Should I try a bite of this try on camera? Bite. Okay. So I have my um my special test hashi right here. Um, is there a way I should approach this or just, no, just, just take get it in. in there? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Uh, and I apologize for the people at home that have to watch this, but uh, okay. Um, I'm gonna take. Okay. So this is all eggplant, right? Eggplant. Is it spicy? Uh, a little bit of uh, sriracha Ooh, stuff. We may be paying for that a little later Just in the program a little here bit, today. Not too much. You'll pay for it, the live audience. Okay. Mm. It's in the recipe book. Yeah. Oh, it's very. Mm. Mm. Huh? <laughs> Here's the money I owe you. <laughs> Bribe. That's great. What else is in there? I'm I'm seeing another texture besides the eggplant. What well, else the, is the in there? The trick of the eggplant is that oh, uh, is to, they tend to, especially restaurants, tend to be mushy or, or right. too wet. Right. So what you do, you, you slice it up like like the instruction says in the cookbook here, and you coat it with cornstarch. Um. And you fry it with oil and cornstarch. Now, cornstarch is uh, browning it, a nice word for it. Browning it, and it keeps the oil from soaking, and it keeps the water from coming out. So it's firm, firm enough, but not too soft. And then once that's cooked and set aside, you cook the basic sauce with, you know, hoisin sauce, oyster sauce. Nice. You know, uh, sesame seed oil, vinegar, sugar, garlic, garlic, of course, and some pork. Great. Or you can use chicken, whatever. I will save a little portion and I'll bring it home to you, Janet, at home. So, so <laughs> thank you. Great. Thank you very much, well, Alvin, for you. joining us. Yeah, thank you. Thank Sharon, you. Uh, let's see who our next guest is today. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Well, I want to say you got the better part of this gig. <laughs> I did. I did, Sharon. <laughs> okay. I wasn't rude enough to ask. Mary Ann G told me how old she is. She's a. You told me you're approaching. 80 years old, she is still... 78, going on 79. Okay, 78, going on 79. I say that because she's still active, playing tennis, still serving <laughs> aces. Yeah. Every so often. <laughs> well, she'll be serving up, you know, one of the most popular Korean dishes uh, in just a moment. But I wanted to talk to you. Get this. In her late 60s, you were back in college at Kasumnas River, taking courses in what? I, I did photography um, 2003 for about four years. And then when I finished with photography, I only took one class at a time. Um, then I started culinary arts, and I did that for about three and a half or four years. And I only took one class at a time because that's usually a class that starts around 12 or 1, one hour lecture, and then we're in the kitchen. And you learned how to make main dishes and a lot of breads okay. and pastries and appetizers. appetizers. Meats and what is it that, that you learned in this class that you didn't know before? Um, it, you know, everybody loves to eat. And, and if you love to cook, if you love to cook, there's a lot of curiosity about how things goes together. And, um, and it, it was a lot of fun. There's a handful of us um, adults, you know, other than the <laughs> mature students, adults, the yes, student, the students who are in the major, you know, there's a handful of seniors, you know, just taking the class for fun, and I was taking it for fun, and um, 
I just had so much fun in there because you're in the big kitchen and we had an instructor and she knows you know, everything and she can just tell you, you know, in Los Angeles, she's from the LA area, all these wonderful places that if you get down there that we should try and a couple of favorite places like the uh, Korean taco uh, food truck. Where's Mary Ellen? <laughs> yeah, she has a recipe in the book. The there is. Korean, uh, Cor uh, Korean beef tacos. Mm -hmm. And we, I chased a, we chased a truck around. Uh, what's, the name, what's the name of that truck? So I, I don't have a microphone, but what's the name of the truck? Oh, yeah, no, we, yeah. I'll come back on really All right, quickly. there you go. Just to answer, because she said it. So, um, uh, of course, I'm going to forget his uh, the name of the Korean the name the of the Korean person, but yes, <laughs> he created the mobile um, uh, food craze food literally truck. in L.A. And not only that, but he worked at the Embassy Suites for eight years in Sacramento. He has a television program on KQED and has written like five cookbooks. David Chang, took me a while, sorry about that. Uh, and we invited him to actually submit a recipe himself, and he didn't respond. So I just did a whole lot of checking, and we were able to, we lied a little bit in the book. We actually got it from one of his chefs. <laughs> Thank you. So that's the story of, of one of the recipes. But you made a lot of complicated recipes, and out of the experience, you've discovered something about yourself. Um, I, one thing I learned is that um, the recipes, you know, if something looks interesting, it would not scare me to attempt it. But in the past, you know, when less recipes look too unfamiliar or too many ingredients, you just like flip the page and go on to something else. But um, I've gotten to the point where I had courage, you know, to try different things and then, you know, had a lot of help too, you know, from our cook. So cooking. Our instructor. Yeah. So cooking should not be intimidating. Um, well, you know, I think cooking, there's everyday cooking, which we all have to do. And then there's creative cooking. You know, which some people do more than every day, you know. But for me, creative cooking is for company special. Well, you've made a dish that is very popular uh, for those folks who love Korean food or want to experience Korean food. So why don't you let Koichi in on one of your favorite dishes. So walk very carefully. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> Here's Mary Angie. Good contestant. Um, you know, when when Sharon mentioned uh, that you played tennis, I, I do have a tennis memory. Sorry for going off tangent here. But uh, my tennis doubles partner in high school, he was like six foot four. And I, yeah, I'm the same size as I was. Okay, so, um, and, uh, you know, he, I bent down. And as I stood up, he caught me with the end of his racket. So I have six stitches in my head from that. So, so yeah, anyway, so. You're serving aces, he was serving me. But anyway, um, so would you do me a favor and pronounce this dish again for me once okay. again and tell me a little bit about it. Okay, it's um, japchae. 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 Wonderful. And uh, you know, Chinese has a cellophane, a cellophane noodle mm. of vermicelli that is similar to this. I see. Um, but the Korean, their noodle is um, sweet potato base. It's not, the, oh. the Chinese vermicelli is rice. It's rice noodle. This is um, sweet potato. And um, I kind of changed it from the recipe book because I thought if I had made it hot from home and then covered it to come here, the vegetable would be like it would, it would keep over steam. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Gotcha. So, so I did it different. I, um, uh, instead of putting the noodle back into the pot with the, you know, the vegetable and the meat, and those are sauteed separately. And the once the, the meat and the vegetable is in the pot, and then the, instead of putting the noodles back in there, I did not do that. I kept the noodles when the noodles was first boiled, I um, strained it, and then I poured ice water on it. Oh, I see. Yeah, and once it's drained, I put the sauce on that and kept it. And yeah. ice water to prevent it from continuing to cook and keep to it keep it right cold. at that well, right. It's, yeah, it's still, it's still cold, so gotcha. that, yeah, so that we can eat it like, it sh I mean, it'll taste the way it should. Okay, <laughs> And great. not overcook. And, and after I did the, uh, the vegetable and the meat, I, um, also super cool that. And I learned that from my cooking class, how oh. to super yeah, cook things wow. in an ice 
ice pan. In your cooking class, did you have to do all that food safety training as well? Did they teach we you did. all that we as well? We did everything. And then, yeah. and then we did the cooking. And then at the end of the day, we also had these huge pots and baking pans and everything. That to cool everything. Wash. Properly. Oh, to wash. <laughs> gotcha. To wash. Yeah. So, but okay. cooking classes are really fun. Well, great. Would okay. you like to uh, show me how to... What, how, uh, I'm not, no, no. Would you like to serve me? Yeah. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> the audience turned on me very quickly, Sharon. I, um, uh, One track it mind. Was a joke. It was a joke. But, uh, I, Sharon, you said I got the better end of the deal, but I might have turned it against me, against myself. What type of meat is in this noodle dish? Um, you know, usually at home I, I do pork because pork doesn't spoil. This is beef. Oh, this is beef, nice. and and I uh, I was hoping, you know, I bought it at um, Chinese market in slices, and so I was usually I think the slices are meant for soup, because once I cooked it, it like, all fell. The, the, I mean, it still it still has a meat flavor, but all the meat. Fell. <laughs> yeah, watch him eat. Make it look good, okay? <laughs> no, no, that's very tasty. Yeah. That's really. really Ted, please don't get a close-up of me. Um, when I'm, when I'm, can you can you zoom out, please, on the uh, eating shots? No, oh, this no, is no, no. Yeah, take no taste. Have some more. So have you more. mentioned. So good. is this supposed to be served as a cold dish, as you mentioned before? No, that I was no, I did, I did that today. too. I, yeah, because otherwise, if Correct. you had, it would be pretty mushy if I cooked Correct. it warm and then brought it here. Yeah. What type of so, mushrooms are these that I'm tasting here? Shiitake. Shiitake, very nice. All right. Actually, you know, this is the first time I made it cold like mm -hmm. this. I had to think through. How to bring it so that it's presentable and taste? Does it taste look okay? Absolutely, taste good? it's delicious. In, it's in very fact, good. I think from here on out, if I was to take this someplace, I would do this it is the way cold. To do it. I would do it cold and Absolutely. put it in my little cooler. Very good. I'm not a good actor, folks. So what I'm saying, these are good. These are all really, really good. You know, this is great. Um, thank you. So, what was the again? Um, <clears throat> any other like inspirations, inspirational stories behind how you came to this oh, and chose yeah. this dish? Um, I had. I, you know, it's in the book. I had um, this dish um, probably 25 years ago, the first time. I never had it before at a, um, my uncle's house at a shower. This is at a shower for my, um, my cousin's daughter, a, a, a bridal shower. And I've always loved this. I did, had no idea what it was, and I did not bother to ask then what it was. And it wasn't until... 15, 20 years later, you know, at my cousin's house in Silicon Valley, he eats, they, the family eats out a lot. We were in a Korean restaurant. I go, that's what I had. And I learned the name of it. And from then on, I was looking for recipes. And um, this is closer. In fact, this is better than what I made last night when I test nice. make it. Yeah, because I made it the way um, in the Sorry, recipe book. Night, no, no, in, in the recipe book, because it's hot, you know, made it hot. But today I made it so that I could transport it and still have it. So are these, uh, you mentioned these noodles are not like the rice noodles. Does that mean that, I, and I don't know anything about this, but does that make them gluten free or is that not the case? They're sweet potato. So sweet potato, is that you, gluten is you wheat? Google, Google that at home. Folks, Google sweet that. potato okay. is that gluten? It's not gluten. So, right. so that was a valid question. So good. Okay, good job. No, no, okay. I could say something else about the noodles. Okay. Um, so I went. I went to the Asian market just Saturday to get um, the sweet potato noodles, the glass noodles, and they had prices from three something per bag, one pound bags, up to six dollars. And I go like, they all look the same. So which one? And I, I and so I, I asked a gal who you know came up, uh, a gal from she wasn't Korean, but she said if I were you, I would get the one from Korea. Well, the one from Korea is the most expensive, but there is a difference. Um, I've made this dish many times before, and I've used a cheaper noodle, a cheaper glass noodle, and and I remember in the past when I've made it, there were. Um, some of the noodles, they're, they're not consistent. They were like hard lumps in the, you know, like thickets, knots in the noodle. And then those noodles did not cook when the rest of it cooked. So, so I, I paid, you know, more for the Korean brand, but I checked and I said, like, these noodles are consistently, yeah. 
Wonderful. Yeah. Well, like like all things, yeah. ingredients are the most important things. You get what, what you, you pay put in. Yeah, you get what you pay for. So wonderful. So thank you very You're much uh, for your submission today. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And uh, <laughs> let's go back. Sharon, do we have another um, guest here today? We another do. Person? And I was going to say, what's good about this cookbook is that it has a, a resource page. So you... Uh, can see the different Asian markets that exactly. you can go to and, and shop for goods. Right now, Lana Chong is here with me, and she was the fifth of seven sisters, and she has the photo to prove it. <laughs> and also because my sisters are a little bit shy, but they're all fabulous cooks. We're all kind of different, but my mother had seven different daughters, and we're all kind of involved with the church, with ACC, um, Sports Foundation, um, we've done a lot of cooking for friends, and it's my pleasure to have my sisters be here. And Mary Ellen said, bring along a sister, and I said, well, okay, I'll do the best I can, and this is the best I can. <laughs> you know, but being the fifth of seven sisters, you, you had to watch your older sisters cook, and moms cook, your mom cook, and your aunties cook, and what, you are left with the dishes? Well, you're left with the dishes when you were um, asked to chop a chicken by one of your older sisters, and then you go in and chop the chicken, you crack the bone, you made nasty little cuts, and they say, well, okay, go out back and wash the dishes. So when I married, I didn't cook at all. My very first outing in our little patio on 43rd Avenue in a hibachi, I burned steaks. So that was my very first outing as a cook. But um, I was lucky that my mom had the best cooks in the world around her. She was self is a great cook. My older sister became more patient with me and there were some things that I wanted to do. So you learn by observing. And then I took cooking classes too, so. Well, now you consider yourself an elder auntie. And it's called Chenggu. And my <laughs> Chenggu's daughter, my cousin Lois is here. Chenggu is the honorific Cheng, meaning the elder auntie. So from my Chenggu, who was Lois's mother, she taught me many, many, many of these things. So when you're given the opportunity to learn something, seize it with two hands and go do it. Don't just say, oh, I think I'm going to want to do this. You want to learn how to do it, you've got to get your hands in there, wash the watercress, wash you know, the chicken, and you can only learn by doing. You've become the soup maker for your family. I have become the soup maker. And I, my dish today is cyan toy soup, which is watercress soup, beloved by generations of Chinese, Chinese Americans, and um, a great soup during this season when it's chilly and you're kind of shivering in your hand and your hands are cold. This is a long simmered soup, which means you start your broth, you get it simmering, you put in some nice big chunks of, of pork neck bone, which gives it succulent sweetness. I put in carrots, and then the uh, watercress is added always when the water is boiling. And that's something I learned from a great cookbook um, author herself, Grace Young. And Grace Young has wisdom of the Chinese kitchen. And we all here want to know about the wisdom of the Chinese kitchen. And there were just some things that you do and some things that you don't do. But anyway, so I have my soup here. It's on page 63. And Cyan Toy, watercress is available year round. You want to take it, clean it out, peel some nice carrots to give it some nice flavor. We are all after bone therapy. A lot of us need it to beef up our system, restore and rejuvenate our bodies when we get tired. So this is uh, it's a very therapeutic soup. Very therapeutic, very restorative, restorative, and I think you'll like the flavor. I'll let you head over to Koichi okay. to show him Shall the do's in? and the don'ts okay. when it comes to go. making this very therapeutic soup. Very therapeutic. Thank smell. you, Lana. Wow. She said smell. So uh, I think you covered almost everything there about the dish. So the only thing left to me is the tasting part. And yes. <laughs> But Sharon should have a little bit of a taste. Sharon, the, I think Sharon should taste a little bit as well. <laughs> she deserves it. Just a second. I absolutely think so. And, you know, most, most cooks, Chinese cooks, like to have their veggies bright green. This is probably one of the, one, the few times when your veggie is not bright green because you have simmered it. And it's simmered with, and Koji? Thank you, thank you. Yes. Thank you And what much. we have here 
is my recipe actually had my using pork steak. This time I'm using pork neck bone. And you want the marrow, you want the flavor, you want the depth of pork bone. And I want to have <laughs> I want to have Sharon also be strong and healthy. That that is a wonderful uh, uh, and for lack of a better term, it's a very smooth flavor. It's not overpowering. It it's a very lovely, wonderful, soothing Thank you. flavor. Thank very you. nice. Very and nice. And also, the other thing is is um, some hints is that when you start any pot of soup and you've got your pork bone simmering, you have all this thing that English word is scum. But then also, we in Chinese have the terrible word called po, and you want to clear all that scum or pull out so your soup is clear and it's pretty. So yep. you add this and then you don't drink a lot of it because it's a very cooling, restorative soup. So whatever's left over, I'm going to bottle for Sharon or for <laughs> my friends to take home. And it's a great way of, of uh, being a good neighbor and a friend to many. This is really good, and I've never had watercress soup before. Good, yeah. good. It's it's a, it's a it's a very very uh, beloved in the Chinese community. Absolutely. So I love to make soup. And Lana, you've inspired us on how to live our life as well. Clear out the scum. Clear out the scum. And, <laughs> and, and we, live we a clear, and, and healthy life. Oh. Yes, I think yes. that is wonderful. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. That was delicious. It's very nice. It is yeah. good. Very nice. I hear Koichi and his mantra. Clear out the scum. Clear out the <laughs> Don't remember that from today's show. Okay. Sharon, uh, do we have another contributor today? We do. Oh, wonderful. I think it's time for a, a little dessert. How are you? Stacey Law is here. She's a retired orthodontist. I asked her if she was a foodie, and you said you... I like to eat and travel for food. Does that make you but, a foodie? Um, sort of. I'm learning. The reason I say that is, I, I said, do you post your pictures to social media? And you do take photos of your food, but... Yes, we just send it to each other in the family. <laughs> so it could be with something we made, or if we're dining out. I think we're kind of bragging. <laughs> so my kids are out of state, so I guess it's a way to communicate. Mm -hmm. you know? Tell us about some of your dining destinations, some of your exotic trips. How about that? Oh, well, recently we went to Singapore. This is the first time I went there. So everything they say about the food is true. You know, the um, Hainanese chicken is amazing. But I guess it's because they cook the rice with fat. So I don't think we could get away with that at home. <laughs> so. And then you did Japan? Yes, we did Japan. And um, I think for Japan, I tend to, it was a cruise. So I had a few meals out, but it was the best ramen I've ever had. Mm -hmm. So. Okay, and then I couldn't believe the trip she took to Hawaii. Oh, yeah. Where uh, did you go? Um, Punahou has a carnival that's really well known. Punahou High School. Right. Hmm. Hmm. And you remember Who went there? <laughs> that President Obama went there, right. <laughs> so it's beautiful. Yeah. I've never been to the campus before. So um, they have all these well-known foods, mm -hmm. and I have to return because I only ate a couple of them. It's so popular that these lines are really long, and we were there before they even opened. So, but what was yeah. the best dish there? Um, I like the malasada. Is that how you pronounce it? The fried, malasada. right? What is it? Malasada. malasada yeah. Oh, see, so. you're getting to be a foodie. Right. Yeah. There and then you go. Portuguese bean soup. That was really good. Yeah. I tried to make it at home, but I think theirs is still better. Now the dish, I say dish. The dessert you brought is something that you saw your parents make, both mom and dad. Right. It's kind of our favorite cake in the family. But I also know a lot of families um, have this recipe too. So um, I wrote in the book that my mother made it for her dentist and his immediate reaction was, oh, this is what my grandma made me. He called it the egg cake. Egg cake. Right. Mm. So a lot of people call it sponge cake. Yeah. My auntie yeah. called it sponge cake. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, it's on page 207. I'm going to let you uh, share it with Koichi over okay. there. Okay, thank you. Let's see. How are we going to do this? Right. Uh, right. 
I brought some with slices. That might be easier. Oh, wonderful. You're prepared for the... <laughs> Either way, right? Sure. You want me? Oh, Mary Ellen oh, has it. Oh, look at this. We have you don't have to eat the whole cake. All right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you. Sharon reminded me to bring strawberries, too, but they're in the freezer with no, the fridge <laughs> because the whipped cream is in there. <laughs> so I, after you could have it. <laughs> no, so uh, it's interesting, you know, in today's era of social media, we always are so self-conscious about what we post and what we do because it lasts on the Internet forever. But I think you need to start a foodie Instagram. Oh. you got to start an Instagram. I think everybody at home wants to see your amazing dishes. I wish I and desserts, could. Maybe so. when my daughter comes back from college. That'll be wonderful. She can help me. So I know you did mention a little bit about this, but what, what inspired you to do, uh, and you mentioned this, but, you know, a dessert versus uh, another dish. Is this something that... I guess for me, um, it was just something I think of my family with it. Oh, that's nice. Right? So I really like the idea of a community cookbook, even the process of the book. Um, Mary Ellen was really good about keeping the voices of each contributor. And then I think we pushed out our printing deadline a couple of times. Ted was really good. He wanted to make sure everyone could contribute. So that's what I think of with ACC. There's a lot of empathy. And yeah, and I'm glad you touched upon that. Sharon did mention that earlier, but this cookbook is not just about recipes. It's about the contributors' stories. And we think that that is almost just as interesting, and you're going to find just as much enjoyment in those stories as you will the recipes. Okay, so what am I going to do here? Am I going to pick it up? or? You're welcome to have a <laughs> how, how do I, am I just going to, am I just going to oh, yes. go for, oh my goodness, I feel bad because it's it, the slices are big. <laughs> Sharon, you got to, uh, I don't know. Is there okay, a napkin? I'll, I'll do it. Okay, I'm just going to do it. There's, there you go. There are no napkins. Okay. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is like. This is not sophisticated food, so it's okay. Oh. <laughs> it is so light and spongy. It is very, ni oh, very, oh, very you. nice. Very delicious. Yeah, I think the uh, tricks are cake flour because it's lighter. And then the um, baking sugar is smaller, so it helps keep it light. It is super light and fluffy. I can't. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I know, too late now. I got This microphone is gone, Ted. Sorry. I'm destroying ACC's equipment here, but uh, that's very, very lovely. And oh, you mentioned you. that you would put, like, other things on top, like toppings. Oh, yeah. And... So this one has the mm. uh, oh, confection sugar. I see so that. It's quick and easy. That's nice. Yeah. That's can't go wrong with that, huh? Right. Oh, it great. hides a lot of mistakes. Well, I'm sure this is a huge family favorite. I mean, this is just great. And it's very light, so after a big meal, you still got room for chiffon cake, right? Right. Exactly. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Stacy. Oh, thank thank you. you so much for being a contributor. Um, Sharon, uh, I don't know if you're ready for the next uh, contributor here. Do we have somebody up next? We are ready to go. Is it on? Yes. Testing. Testing. One, two, three. <laughs> Come on in. Yeah, come on in. Uh, okay, there here we, we are. Liz has been very busy preparing her dishes, <laughs> so. <laughs> yes, preparation. You are here and ready to go. All right. For folks who tune into, you know, AB, ABC, ACC <laughs> programs, these two are uh, a familiar pair. Oh, Molly, I think we want to put a microphone on you. Oh. There you go. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. <laughs> this is Auntie Molly and Liz. <laughs> you two played Mahjong together for a while and didn't realize that you were neighbors. Is that the story? Yes. No. Oh, no. no. Well, we are neighbors. I, it's in the book. Yeah. No, no. She said it's in the book. Correction. The oh, book oh, says dear. seven feet. Well, are you my neighbor? Are you my neighbor? Th they said that they were living seven, seven feet, feet apart, apart and didn't realize they were neighbors. All right. Seven no. blocks. Seven, seven, seven blocks. blocks. But when you realized that you were neighbors, yes, you found a number of things in common. And yes. one of them was food. Of course. Well, we love to cook together. Mm -hmm. Yes, and we share recipes mm -hmm. together. And it's fun. And most important of all, I always feel that I want to learn. I learned from my mother, who's passed away many, many years ago. So who do I learn from? And that's how we started a friendship. Because you I want to learn. Because you found yourself teaching. Um, well, I teach dental health, thanks to an orthodontist here. <laughs> but uh, I have been in front of thousands, tens of thousands of children. And I always see that eagerness. So you're going to see me looking out at the audience a lot. You're like my students. Are you worried, though, that some recipes will be lost? 
you know, as, yeah. as time goes on that, mm. you know, recipes may be forgotten, that families are not passing along recipes to their children. That's right, because the younger generation, I don't think they cook. They, <laughs> they get it's fast not. food. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we go into Safeway and we say, where's the meat department? It doesn't yeah. even exist. It's, everything is pre-packed, pre-cut. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But you really want to encourage young people to, to try to cook and get beyond the three-ingredient <laughs> dinner yes. or the four-ingredient yes. dinner. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of fun cooking, but you have to prepare everything, mm -hmm. so it takes time and effort. And it was one meal that really brought you together. Was it for a Lunar New Year? Lunar New Year is uh, also known as Chinese New Year. On the first day, you're supposed to go vegetarian, but you do all the prep work the night or the few days before. and so. You have to find as many as 13 ingredients. It's called Jai. And Jai is located, if you have your book in front of you, on page 183. Uh, it takes us two days to prepare it and two hours just to stir and stir. So that's what Auntie Molly taught me. And you have, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Auntie Molly. I didn't mean to interrupt. What? I, I didn't mean to interrupt. Okay. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you have a table full of ingredients here, so I'm going to bring Koichi this away, and you are making comfort food, right? This is yes. comfort food, juke. Juk. 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 You start off with one cup of rice, that's one cup, and that's enough to feed an army. Because it's one part rice to ten parts water. Oh. So this will feed an army. But it's the condiments, as you can see, that makes the difference. So why don't you, um, why don't you describe what's, what these uh, condiments are, if you, if you would okay. be able okay. to. Well, how did this get in here? Oh, hey. OK, <laughs> that is Alfred's dish. <laughs> <laughs> no, eggplant. Okay. Uh, oh, let's put okay. that in the jar. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, um, you can buy the meats cooked or prep it. I prepped the chicken, okay. known as bok chit guy. It's uh, simmered, poached. There's cha su, ho chin has the best. Is that, a, is that a market here in Sacramento? Oh in yes, on Freeport off of Fruit Ridge. Okay, we will accept your sponsorship check in the mail. Okay, ho chin, I have thank more you. sponsorship. ACC, right. All right. Okay. Uh, but next door, they make yao jiao guai. And yao jiao guai is the ingredients that really makes it more filling. It's a Chinese donut. Oh. So when I bought the Chinese yao jiao guai, oh, wow. also known as deep fried devils, uh, I said to the kitchen crew, they didn't have any parsley over at Ho Chin, the grocery store. So what can I do? Uh, can you give me a couple of uh, strands? She came out and gave me this. So I was really lucky because you need cilantro as well as green onions. Now, there's another form of green onions, but <clears throat> this is what we call the basic three. Uh, Martin Yan taught this to me 50 years ago. It's ginger, garlic, and onion. So those are your basic three. And uh, I saw Martin Yan last month, and he remembered it, and he mentioned it in his book talk. Wow. And he also put in a sponsorship for our book, ACC. So, wow, wonderful. you know, you mm -hmm. promote, you promote. Finally, oh, do you want to know what other ingredients or? No, no, I was just still wanted to revisit. Uh, what, what was the definition of this again? Did you say devil? Deep fried devil. You yep. did say devil, didn't devils. you? Devils. The yeah. devils in the donuts. OK, yes. got it, got yeah, it. Yeah, yao In Chinese, it's yao guai. Yeah. Guai is devil. Ghost. Okay. Or, or you could call it yao tiu, which is just oil sticks, yao tiu. And, and uh, these are little e enoki mushrooms? Or? Yeah, I couldn't get the shiitake mushrooms at Ho Chin. You know, they're seasonal. They don't have everything you need. So sometimes I have to shop at another store, sure, sure. too. But I did use the enoki mushrooms because my daughter-in-law, her last name is Enoki. <laughs> there you go. Okay. <laughs> and last but not least, I know you're going to love it. I'm going to love it. It's called millennial, oh, millennial yeah. eggs. Now, what are they? 
Well, I brought it in two forms. When you buy it, it's been in this package, oh, maybe three, four months, who knows, half a year, maybe more. It's a duck egg, and it's packaged as a thousand-year-old egg, different from your hundred-year-old eggs, which are salted. These have sulfur. And, and a hundred-year-old egg is how old? Uh, uh, I don't know how many months. If a thousand year old egg yeah. is three months, uh, thousand year. a hundred year old egg is yeah. less. What's the difference? Well, what, you oh, can what? smell the difference. You can smell the difference. It's sulfur. <laughs> Take my word for it. Okay. Stinky. Hmm, hundred years. Thousand. Oh, thousand. <laughs> and um, so those are your condiments along with the. Oils and the spices. Are these oils spicy? Are they hot uh, oils? One is they... spicy. This is the spicy chili oil. Okay. And you have regular sesame of oil. Of course, sesame you oil. You put drops. You don't pour a whole bunch. You That's put right. it in after it's cooked. And okay. finally, the soy sauce. Okay. And uh, no particular brand, but I did get a soy sauce jar from the oldest one that's made in San Francisco. 60 years old. There's a soy sauce company. Really? Yeah. Uh, Wing Nin. Forever, really? yeah. I just looked it up. So now I, I, I don't know why I'm obsessed with these eggs. Uh, oh, do, yes. they, do they have to be refrigerated, or what's the deal? With I don't these know. Duck eggs? I just bought it from you Ho don't Chin. Know. I just bought it from Ho Chin. I've never ever cooked it, but in the restaurants, Pei Dan Sao Yuk Juk is one of the favorites. Who has had Pei Dao? Uh, Pei Dan Sao okay. Yuk Juk. That's the specialty. But this is the first time I okay. bought it and cut it up. All right, I and that's in the shell and everything, right? Is that what that is? You want the that? shell? No, 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 that's okay. <laughs> okay, great, great, so. Oh, what, 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 did you smell it? You did. I did, I did, I smelled it already. I smelled it last time, yeah. So Can sulfur. you smell, yeah, okay. So <laughs> I bet it's fun at your dinner table. Oh, we don't eat, we play with our food. <laughs> Okay, so tell me, okay, so could you uh, pronounce the name of your dish once again and show me how it all okay. comes together, if you would? You okay. Why don't we put uh, whatever... Yeah. Uh, Sharon, would you okay. like to help right. yourself? Right. Yeah. Okay, Chuk, you each have a bowl. And you this is a stir. rice porridge, is that what you're yes. doing? Yes, it's rice is? porridge. Yes. Ooh, it's warm. It's, it's com warm. comfort food. Usually. Comfort food. Comfort yeah. food. Yeah. It feels and, comfortable. And yes. in China... They make this, but they don't put all the ingredients. Oh. And that feeds many, many. Just the porridge part, huh? Yeah. Oh, this is the fancy Americanized part. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's the Sacramento version. Sacramento version. Mm -hmm. so. Ho Chin Market, Freeport Boulevard. Right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. And, and Jade found him because they gave me the cilantro for free. Oh. <laughs> From their kitchen. <laughs> That's Jade Fountain, also on Freeport Boulevard. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So let's go. What do we do? Just start get the throwing pinchers? stuff in. I'm gonna let you step in with the pinchers. You do it here. Here. Just, here. No. Yeah. Pinch me. I mean, not no, not pinch. No, you can use the oh, well, spoon. Thank you. Too. Thank you for yeah, me. just a little bit of each because I brought yeah. the. All right. The Whatever, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever you want. You gotta share with Chick everybody. Yeah. No, yeah. no, you have it yourself. <laughs> All right. Okay, no sure. Oh, can I just take? Yes, sure. Okay, thank you so much. Did you put a little of everything? Don't forget the little devils. I did. Here's the spoon. Thank you. You want soy sauce? or? Yeah. I'm gonna try it first without seasoning, right? Or do you have to put it in, or how do you do it? You should put a little soy sauce. Good. Yeah, very good. How how? Yeah, ho ho ho. Oh, I don't know. I'm just making things up. Okay. Okay. Oil. Oil. All right. And soy sauce. What would you like? Okay. Uh, Maybe, oh, you don't have chicken. enough ingredients like, like that. Well, we just did a little How bit. About yeah. Chicken. Wait, 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 wait. More. Oh, I've got that too. You That's like that? Spicy. Whatever right. you like. Not too mm. spicy. And ginger. And ooh. Yeah, the ginger is real good. It's dripping. Uh, you need some uh, meat in it. Mm. Don't you want some meat? Are you vegetarian? No, I'm not vegetarian. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. All How right. about some? Um, but the broth soy sauce sauce took a long time to cook. Mm -hmm. Soy sauce. What's the soy sauce? Oh, oh so come on how, how long do you have to cook the broth for? How long you? Uh, the broth was about two hours. Oh, wow. That was done yesterday. Oh wow! I don't want to make it. Wait, wait. Not oh. finished. Two more. Mm, mm. That's the sesame oil. It gives it that nice. Uh, Toasted taste, taste. With some and then a little chili. Green. Oh, oh, you're okay. gonna be too chilly. You're gonna get a little hot on that one. You got a lot of chili yeah, oil there, Sharon. Be careful. Yeah. 
What do you think? Can handle it. You can handle it. Very nice. You like it? Comfort Very, very, very delicious. Comfort yeah. food. Mm -hmm. I love all of these dishes. I told you. I warned you about the. Ch get this oh, shot. Get Sharon on the camera, guys. I I warned you, Sharon. It's, it's a little. Though. It is good. It's delicious, right. but. I, I just love that we're featuring so many of these types of dishes here today. These, mm -hmm. When you say comfort food, they really, really are. It it's is. something you can eat every day with the family, oh. and it's something everybody's going to enjoy. Well, there's something also. It's medicinal. Mm. Okay, right. rice, when it's boiled down, is very digestible. Mm -hmm. And what I am proud of is my daughter cooks chuk chuk for her daughter. My granddaughter's four years old, and she knows that chuk chuk is a recipe that mm. her popo taught her mom. Oh. That's so sweet. Yeah. That's so sweet. It's wonderful. These these mm -hmm. cooking stories that we're hearing. It's so much more than just the food. It's mm -hmm. their culture. It's their history, huh? Mm -hmm. It's your family history. Mm -hmm. So what a lovely thing to pass she down. She has a wonderful story too about Jook. Auntie Molly oh. got a quick story about Jook. Oh, when we were teenager, uh, no, teenagers. In City College, not teenager. We want Jook, and there's no Jook. Uh, in Sacramento at those in those days, so we put our money together, and see we have enough for gas, and for the joke, and we just go over to San Francisco to San Wall, San that Wall. famous joke place. It's upstairs, and I think it's still around. Is uh, the revive. Some wall is there, but we need to support it because the next couple of weeks they're debating if they want to keep it open. They're having an international conference and they only yes. want certain restaurants open in Chinatown. So go support some wall. Yes. Well, Elizabeth and Auntie Molly are the greatest promoters of businesses throughout <laughs> Sacramento and the San Francisco area. But Sharon, I think we're going to have to, yeah. we're nearing the end of our hour here, yes. huh, Sharon? Oh. So and we've got uh, Mary Ellen, who yeah. is bringing a number of dishes from okay. other home cook contributors. Thank so I think very, we're going to... Thank you very Mary much. Mary Ellen, let's take the main table. table. Thank you so much. Go ahead and... Uh, You're thank very you. welcome. welcome. Thank you. This is great. Thank you thank very you. much. Oh, yeah. nice. Thank you. Thank you. It was good, though. Sorry. Oh, too much oil. <laughs> So, you know, as we mentioned earlier, Mary Allen is one of the editors of the cookbook, uh, the ACC cookbook, The Foods We Share, The Stories We Tell, along with Chef David Suhu. And a number of other contributors made dishes for us. And why don't you go ahead and... Oh, hold on one second. I think we need to clip the microphone. And then if you would just tell us about what we have here. Great. So, uh, thank you. Uh, first of all, I do want to mention... So that some of you know who Chef David Suhu is. He owned a Shinwa East West Bamboo Nine Doors. Oh. Uh, so he's one of the best restaurateurs. I get interviewed all the time. They say, where's the best food you can eat? And I go in his kitchen today. And uh, we have a lot of contributors. My brother, Virginia Uchita, are helping. So uh, I just wanted to explain some of these, this one was supposed to be a wonton soup. It's actually a one of our Vietnamese soups with meatball. We also have yakisoba. Thank you for pronouncing that correctly. And Sue Sakata uh, has a wonderful story. I think that you should read it in the book. She is from Cortland, and her memories of preparing that uh, are wonderful. She also made, how are you going to pronounce Sukiyaki? Sukiyaki. Yes. You pronounce Very it good. Sukiyaki. Okay, I've been doing it wrong all those years. Oh, <laughs> and then we have Kenzo McCarthy. Kenzo McCarthy, uh, again, wonderful story in the book. What his memories are was being in uh, Florin with his grandparents, picking strawberries. They also came from Hawaii, and uh, this is actually a very slow-cooked pork in, wow. a, in a clay pot. And I have, uh, they don't like it when I call adopted by affection family, but I'm going to call it that. I, uh, Sally Fang did a lot of these dishes. That's my daughter-in-law. Um, my uh, son, Francis, made the duck. I don't know where the duck is quite yet. All right. So you're going to want to taste that one, for, or the, the duck. Um, Kathy, we had uh, one of our members... Uh, Sally also created some of the other dishes, including the Galbi Jim, which is a Korean dish. And Joy G and I used to 
teach dim sum wow. in the libraries all over the city. And so she was quite wonderful. My daughter-in-law's family owned a restaurant, so she created that as well. And we have some lumpia to celebrate Philippine cuisine as well, and some Kai Lin. And that recipe, um, I actually made that. It's actually from the Hong Kong, so it's not exactly the way that it was in the cookbook. Uh, and then we have pork with um, other dishes. So, and my favorite actually is the kimchi. My brother and I have many stories of kimchi in our family. My father liked stuff so hot that when you went by the house, your eyes literally burned from the kimchi. So it's one of my favorite things to make. And when we're done, uh, things aren't as hot as we'd like it to be. We would love for you to be able to maybe grab a plate. We'll find some microwaves and get it hot for you. And a lot of these dishes are adaptable. If you don't have the ingredient in your pantry or your fridge. Absolutely. Although I have to say, one of the things that I love, and I shop on Freeport also. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's my favorite place. What's wonderful, and we brought some condiments, they last for forever. So just having like gukujing, uh, different kinds of things in your cabinets so that you can just whip up something. We are meat centric here, but there isn't one of these dishes that you couldn't do that's totally vegetarian. In fact, the yakisoba is actually a vegetarian version. You could do that with the uh, sukiyaki as well, definitely with the, the soups and even the japchae. And what we're hoping is that sometime in January, possibly the first Wednesday during morning coffee, we're going to show you how you can adapt all of these recipes so they're a little bit more healthy. So all of these are included in the cookbook. Every one of these are in the cookbook. With an additional 160 plus more than what we've seen today. Absolutely. And so where can we pick up one of these cookbooks, Sharon? You can pick it up here at ACC Senior Services. Uh, that's there 7334 Park City Drive, Sacramento, California, 95831. If you want it mailed to you, it's $7 extra. Great. And, and I will mention that we will be in local, um, uh, both restaurants locally and also bookstores. We're just making those arrangements That's now, great. and it's going to be available on Amazon and on Barnes and & Noble. And we'll be having some launches pretty soon so that we can do some official launches in the bookstores. So it'll be available everywhere. And, and as we mentioned before, you do have a QR code in this cookbook. Is that correct? Absolutely. So there are updates coming. So this is the gift that keeps on giving. We are nearing the holiday season. Best gift idea ever. So you can come to ACC to pick it up. And uh, there's probably a graphic as well where you can order online and right. get it shipped to wherever you need it to go. I love this quote from Diana Liu as we oh, close out the hour. And first, why don't you tell us a little bit? About so Diana Liu is a wonderful uh, woman. She's a Renaissance member and a supporter of ACC. She died very suddenly about literally I think the book was going to uh, to press and we had time to be able to use one of her quotes. What I loved is, is that we were having a little bit of difficulty getting people to contribute. Diana said, forget your name on it, send to your same list with my name and see what happens. And dozens, if not hundreds of recipes poured in. So uh, I love this quote and I hope Sharon will do. Yes, so um, Diana says, you know, there's just so much love that goes into home cooking. When I make my mother's zongji, zongji it's a savory, uh, sticky rice dumpling. When she makes that, she says, I feel right next to her, guiding my hands, transporting me to another time or place. And that's what cooking can do, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And that's one of, I love these dishes, will transport you to the family memories that you had no matter which of these countries, but they also are a connection to the past and to our ancestors who've been perfecting these dishes for eons, literally. Well, Mary Ellen, I have to say congratulations on this well, amazing you. project. Uh, it came out beautifully, and as you can see here, um, everyone, you're all gonna be able to do this at home. So these are not intimidating recipes that are too hard for you to handle. So, okay, I'll try it. <laughs> I, I used to be a three or four ingredient person. <laughs> I'm going to go for five. There you go. There you go. Step at a time. You folks have been a terrific audience here at ACC, encouraging us, 
keeping Koichi on track. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. <laughs> and again, congratulations, well, thank Mary you so Ellen. Much. Yeah. And thank you for the contributors and everyone who came today. Thank you very much, everybody. And yeah. Thanks to our folks behind the scenes Ted Fong, Sean Hidalgo, Hidalgo. Uh, Keith Burns, Virginia Yuchita, and all of our contributors today. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> it was fun. <laughs>